I felt like I was definitely getting harsher critiques than everyone else, I feel like. And so I just felt, oh, what else did I do, you know? So like, I think by, by this point, on the end of week six, I was like, I think this is it, babes. Welcome to Snatched, a Gay Times original series hosted by me, Sam Dampshness, where each week we will be chatting with the latest eliminated queen of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season four. This week we are chatting with LaPhil. LaPhil, my darling, how are you today? Oh, I am feeling wonderful. I loved watching the episode back last night and I'm just filled with everything and how everything's gone, really. So yeah, still dead excited and full of optimism. <laughs> I, know, I say this every week and I, I genuinely mean it, okay? Because I love this whole cast, but I'm really, really sad to see you go. So how how did you feel after your elimination? I I was so sad to go because I feel like I, I have so much to show on, on that platform and all the different challenges. But um, at the same time, I was dead exhausted. So I was like proper just to be able to go get some sleep. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, it was so, like, I think, I left knowing that I'd done as much as I could on that show. And I think each week it got progressively harder for me, like in terms of hearing the critiques and stuff. And and I felt like I was like definitely getting harsher critiques than everyone else, I feel like. And so I just felt, oh, what else did I do, you know? So like, I think by, by this point on the end of week six, I was like, I think this is it, babes. Like, I'm just gonna enjoy myself, have fun, and then pack my bags and then head off. <laughs> I think what's been so wonderful about you on this series is you, you really do just look like you're having the, the best time and you're just so happy to be there. Like, it's been a joy as a viewer to watch you. Oh, that's good. I'm glad that transpires. Like, I think with any of these competitions, I think there's no, there's no point in like completely stressing out. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And it is such a fabulous platform to be able to show all our different skills. So I think I went in there going to have fun. It felt like a theme park ride. When you go into like this thing, you're like, oh, this is what this looks like. This is work for them. <laughs> and, then, and then you go in and you tackle the roller coasters and stuff. And at the end, you get the picture. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Good analogy, good analogy. Um, <laughs> that lip sync was absolutely crazy, bonkers, chaos. I didn't know where to look. It was it was so much fun. I, I honestly don't think I've ever seen someone lip sync and look like they're having that much fun. We <laughs> well, do you know, it's a Spice Girls song. And it's like, it's how can you not just have this pure sort of childlike like fun? And that's what I was trying to do with that song. Like, obviously, with all my other lip syncs before, like with the Pink and stuff, like I've always done very full on choreography. There's like loads of like hits and stabs and stuff. But with this song, it's such a fun, pure, joyful song. And to do it in front of Mel B, one of my idols, like you, you just have to have fun with it. And every I was always prepared, right? So every lip sync, I always had a narrative to go or like a performance of some sort. And I have saved up loads of different things from obviously all the different weeks. And I was like, okay, this is the one where I have to get it all out because I have a feeling I'm going to go home. So I'm going to get everything out, leave it on the floor and then go. So like I was emptying my shoes. I mean, like I was camping, right? This is my dress, it's a tent. So in my shoes, there was grass, there was leaves, there was branches, like I've been in a field. So that's why I was like shaking all this stuff out. And yeah, it was, I wanted to give a really fun show for the end. Yeah. I mean, I was so concerned for you when Rue said you're gonna be in the bottom two, because I thought, how the fuck is he gonna be able to lip sync in that motherfucking outfit? <laughs> but you I think this is it. I think this is maybe what Rue is doing, like seeing Slinty, like, oh. Well, let's see if this bitch can do it in those shoes. <laughs> like, I had my 12 inch heels on and I was like, no way I'm going to be going to lip sync it in this outfit. And yeah, as soon as I probably stepped on that runway, she saw those shoes. She's like, yeah, you're on the film. <laughs> she wanted to punish you. She, <laughs> <laughs> she was what like, was you <laughs> what was so far was like stomping down that runway and Mel B going, You've like you've outdone all the Spice Girls in their buffalo shoes, yeah. and I was like, do you know what? You inspired me. Like your platform, your six inches gave me the confidence to go for the full twelve. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that, does it? Inspiring Mel B, you, you're good. <laughs> yeah. You're good. I love it. So you portrayed Marie Kondo on the Snatch Game. Um, Posh Spice was your alternative. How do you think it would have gone down if you impersonated her instead? 
Well, this is it. I was going to go for that until I found out Mel B was judging. And I was like, oh, Mel B knows Victoria, like, so well. How can I not fuck her? <laughs> it's like, she's like, well, that's not like her. Or, or you know? And I think I was, I'm a, such a Libra. And I'm like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And in the end, like, I think there was a suggestion of doing, like, posh vice with a Chinese accent. And I was like, is that, like, a marriage that I could do? And I thought about it, and I was like, no, I'm going to stick with Marie Kondo. And, like, and do, because I love Marie Kondo, and I want to do an Asian character. Like, there's so few Asian high-profile celebrities that you can do in a sort of improv game. And I was like, let's see, Marie Kondo is a blank canvas. Like, I could probably, like, try and do stuff, but it was so much more difficult once I found out it was a Strictly Come Dancing twist on it. So mm. I was like, how does this world of Marie meet Strictly Come Dancing and this Venn diagram just was not hitting in my head. <laughs> I was like trying to find the avenue to like get stuff in. But um, yeah, so that was a, that was a toughie for me. A toughie. What is it like doing Snatch Game? I mean, you've watched the show. I've watched the show. What what what, what do we not know about the Snatch Game as oh, a viewer? Well, I guess it's it's sort of as you sort of see, it's very intense. It's like as soon as you're on, questions are constantly being fired. And, and and you're just having to like answer them. And in my head, I was trying to answer like Marie would. So like, I was trying to stay in that character because it was like sort of, it's like an improv challenge again. And we all know how that went down in episode four. <laughs> so I was like, oh my goodness, I just need to get in the zone and just enjoy it as Marie would. Um, so I think it is quite intense. The lights are on, everyone's waiting for your answer. And when you have really loud people on either side, it's very distracting. <laughs> and throughout your time on the series, you developed quite an online following um, with fans often disagreeing with what the judges have to say about your performance and the runway, um, hailing you as the robbed queen of the season. Um, I know you touched upon this a little bit earlier, but do you feel like you were at times overlooked or maybe they just didn't understand you and your drag? Yeah, I think there's, I, I mean, even like my sense of humour is a bit more offbeat and quirky. I think maybe sometimes it didn't translate as well with the judges sometimes. And and that probably, I think the driving force of the show is about comedy in a way. And, um, and if you have a different side of comedy or humour, then maybe it doesn't like connect as well. But in terms of how that impacted all the other challenges, I don't know how that happened, but it was something that I definitely felt during the show and um and increasing so i mean it was more like seeing everyone's feedback back i was like oh my god okay so you guys feel it too it wasn't just me and i felt like i was being really deluded like i had a, a cup of jumbas cup of delusion or something and like i was going i don't know what's going on anymore so i think leaving the show was like ah like quite heartbroken and disheartened but seeing the support and all the love from everyone around who's been messaging at, throughout the entire season. It's been really heartwarming and it sort of restored my faith in all the stuff that I do again. And I'm just so thankful for that, for the socials, for people to be able to like connect with that. And it's been so lovely, like honestly, it's so good. I mean, I don't disagree with these fans. I mean, you had no business being in the bottom for the Larry Poppins rusical. That to me was, insane i genuinely thought you were going to be in the top oh thank you oh my god i do you know i was like after the week before i was like if i'm just i don't want to be anywhere near that bottom three like so i was like every single 24th of that frame that you're going to see when i'm on it's going to be stellar and like be so good and so i and it was a lot of pressure i mean i'm coming on at the end after like seeing seven people build up that energy and i have to like be able to like carry that and make it go further and I was like, I'm here for the mission. I'm here for the challenge and I'm going to do it. And then I, it was one of my favorite runway outfits as well. So yeah, I really enjoyed that week and I was really disheartened with, with the results. But you know, I got through and I did Snatch Game and it's all the most iconic episodes. So I'm so thrilled with the whole journey anyway. It was, it was so much Marie Kondoisms that we didn't see either. Like, I, I mean, she loves folding. I love a bit of folding. There was like definitely like loads of different gags and stuff in there as well. And I love how she always is like, where she like tap taps things to see if things are dead or alive. And I was like, I'm doing that on Pete Burns. Tap tap, dead or alive. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, I loved doing that character. It was, it was super fun. 
Um, following the Larry Poppins musical, you spoke about how significant it was for an Asian person to be cast as the lead. So what has the response been like from, from Asian and Chinese fans? Uh, it's, it's overwhelming. It's because it's obviously something which I've felt throughout my entire life. So be able to be able to hear the stories from everyone else and, and sort of connect that. It's it's been really powerful. I think loads of people resonate with that message is that we've always felt side, especially in England, where like Chinese people aren't like like it's not like in China. right? We've got different experiences of growing up here. And um, and. I think there's just so many people who resonate with feeling sidelined all the time and not being able to be given the chance to be in the spotlight in the middle and and having nothing in the media that represents you as well. Like I grew up watching so many films and I, ne and I never realized I never saw a Chinese person until I started going out to try and get work and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, I've never seen it. And then, and then it all sort of dawned on me how like, opportunities aren't there and you have to fight for them and you have to like try and change like the discourse about who it is who can who can be there taking roles and stuff so yeah I was and I think by that point as well in, in that episode I was sort of feeling that again so I was like you know what I really need to take a central role in this like and just to show that I'm worthy of being here and doing this so um so yes yeah, so that was my statement I think loads of people connected to that which is amazing yeah and you've continued to explore and celebrate your culture on your new EP, La Philosophical. Um, I love um, East to the West. I love yeah. the instrumental to that is so, oh, brilliant. I love that. Um, oh. For those who are yet to check out your music, how would you describe this collection of songs? So the La Philosophical is obviously named after the lyric in Come Alive, but it's also about all the, all the feel good messages that I want to come out from all the lessons I've learned throughout the show. So this, this collection of songs is a whole EP of songs inspired by the runway. So East of the West was inspired by Ruayu. There's also songs inspired by the Hair Week, which is feeling so good because I'm feeling myself and I'm feeling so good. <laughs> and there's a Putsi song up there. And we've got um, the new single, which is This Is My Culture, which is really like a dedication to all my Asian fam, my queer fam, my creative family, like all the people who have really worked with me over this entire time to get me to this point. Because, you know, it's a lot of work and it's really difficult to be able to do this by yourself and without the support of like your loved ones. So um, that song is a dedication to them. So this EP is a whole reflection of this journey and drag race. And uh, I'm so excited to share it with you all. It's so much fun. There's so many different songs. Stream the Philosophical now. Yes, yeah. Yes. Stream it, stream it. Um, what's next for Lafil then, other than music? Uh, what, what can we expect from you? I basically want to be doing everything that I've done before, but more. So <laughs> it'll be all the music, and then it'll be like fashion stuff, and there'll be like acting. And uh, literally, I I love being creative in loads of different areas and drawing them all together with the thread of the film and um, weaving into all these genres and disciplines. So I think the, the things that I want to present is marriages of all that really and just build it and build it and build it and hopefully be able to um, tour more and see everyone and actually see the people who have been connecting with me on social media and I yeah I'm so gagged and excited for what's to come. Well I can't wait to see what you do next. Um, it's going to be fierce no matter what you do. I know it will be. Oh, thank you, Sam. Thank I you. I can't wait. <laughs>